Good morning and welcome to Corpus Christi Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Lent. Let us remember during our Masses this, this weekend, the Savant family, Robert and Vicki Haberger, and Joseph Lockwood. And now let us begin Holy Mass as we sing Save Your People. Save your people, O Lord. Tell us the way to come home. We have been wandering far from your love. Save your people. Let us now gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to enter into these uh, ancient and sacred mysteries on this second Sunday of Lent, let us first prepare our hearts, call to mind our sinfulness, and then call to mind God's mercy, healing, and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. And let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your divine word, that with spiritual sight made pure we may rejoice to behold your glory. For we ask this now through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now be attentive. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I now know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. And so he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. 
Verbum Domini. Deo I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before, before the Lord in, in the land of the living. I believed even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Verum Domini. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. From the shining cloud the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. As he was transfigured before them and his clothes became, he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, <clears throat> casting a shadow over them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. And as they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And so they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ, Glory to, to Jesus him Christ. forever. Amen. Well, today, kind of hard to believe, but today is the second Sunday in Lent already. I wouldn't say it's half over, but it's, 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 it, it, it moves so fast. I always was amazed when I come to the second Sunday of Lent and I go, oh, yeah, that's right, Ash Wednesday was last week, and oh my gosh, it just it goes very quickly. So today we, we want to talk, I think, about you know, how Jesus reveals himself to us and how, as he does, he reveals himself to the disciples on, on Mount uh, Tabor. Uh, this wonderful story of the transfiguration of the Lord. So, but we need to take a step back because in the first reading, we see the beautiful story of Abraham and Isaac. This wonderful story, Bible story, has been um, shared uh, with us for, you know, centuries 
And it's a powerful story. Now, to be sure, it's, it can be a very challenging and a disturbing story. In fact, I'll just kind of take a little sidestep here and just talk about something a little on the secular side. Uh, many uh, noted atheists, Richard Dawkins being one of them, loves, loves to point to this particular story to point out and prove that God is a bloodthirsty, <coughs> vengeful, wrathful, big meanie, basically. And, uh, and I started thinking about that as, as Catherine was reading this morning, you know, that story. And I said, well, you have to, you have to read the story in the light of Christ, you know, because what do we, what is, what does an atheist or a secular person do? All they do is they read the fact that God asked Abraham to offer up his son Isaac, and they think, oh, what a horrible thing, what a horrible, evil God the Old Testament God is, and yet nothing could be further from the truth. God is doing so many things. First, you know, he, yes, he's testing the faith of Abraham. God had promised him to be a father of many nations. And finally, finally, once this beautiful son of his arrived, then it seems like, what? God's asking me to do what now? Uh, to sacrifice this son? How? God, what are you doing? So it requires uh, a great faith on Abraham's part to trust and believe that God only has his good at heart. It's also a prefigurement of what Jesus, what God the Father will do with uh, Jesus the Son <clears throat> as he goes to his cross and is you know, laid on the wood of the cross and is offered for our sa sacrifice. But also there's another thing, <clears throat> and that is that, that a lot of times people look at a human life as the end all and be all. That's all there is, right? Uh, people are filled with so much fear today, I'm sad to say, because they have been led to believe that somehow that uh, if, they, if they contract a certain virus, that maybe their life will be in jeopardy and they will die. Well, friends, that, that's a possibility. It is a possibility. But the thing is that we're all going to die of something someday. Nobody gets out of this world alive. Now, I'm not telling people to be cavalier about their health or their well-being. Far from it. But what I am trying to say is they should not let fear rule their life or hold them in hostage. So many people, I think, are in, 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 the, in, the, in the hostage of fear. They're hostages of fear. And, and the thing is that God shows us in this wonderful story of Abraham and Isaac that, God, that, that death is not the answer. It's not the end. God is going to provide a way out of this bad calamity. And so we have to keep our eyes on, on God. We have to have faith in God. We have to follow the Lord even when times are difficult. You know, sometimes, yes, it is difficult to follow the Lord, especially when you can't see what the next step is going to be. You know, the old saying is, you know, when does the other shoe fall? Well, a lot of us kind of live that way. We, we kind of live on one reality, but we're kind of holding our, hedging our bets to see what happens when the other shoe falls. And again, I think a person of faith doesn't quite do that. They, they just have a faith that God is going to be there at the very end and see them through to the very end and not abandon them. And that's what we need to look at when we see Abraham and Isaac. God did not abandon Abraham or Isaac. Uh, God had, God, no harm ever was going to come to Isaac, not, none whatsoever. Uh, but God was going to provide the sacrifice, the true sacrifice. And I guess that's maybe another analogy is that the true sacrifice that God wants is uh, his, us to follow his son, Jesus. And that's what the disciples do today. Peter, James, and John, they go with Jesus up to the mount where Jesus uh, reveals himself to them in a very special and intimate way. But, uh, you know, I have to always get a little bit uh, human on this one here. I like this story. You know, the disciples and Jesus, uh, they didn't have the modern conveyances of buses or cars or motorcycles or what have you. They had to walk everywhere, shoe leather express. And so I can only imagine that when they finally came to the foot of Mount Tabor, those guys probably were a little bit tired. It was probably maybe the end of the day, the late afternoon. <clears throat> they were going to set up their little camp, maybe put a fire on and get some food going. They were hungry. They were tired. And then Jesus looks at them 
is they're probably sitting next to a tree just going, oh, this feels so good. You know, they're off their feet. And then he looks up the mountain and he goes, anybody want to come with? And so uh, the, the, other, the other disciples probably said, Lord, I'm bushed, I'm tired. And Peter, James, and John probably looked amongst the three and said, well, let's go. <laughs> I can always see that little look in their eye like, here we go again. So they follow him all the way up to this wonderful experience, and Jesus reveals himself. He's revealed, and his, his true divinity is revealed, and it's, it's, it's if you will, it's, it's, uh, it's confirmed by Moses and Elijah. What that basically means is the prophets and the, and the law are confirming that, yes, this indeed, this Christ, he, this is the one that you are following, is the Messiah, the true one, the divine one. So, but sometimes the message is, and I'll end with this, is that sometimes the Lord, you know, asks us to do things, whether it's in the case of Abraham or in the case of the disciples, that we know, we just kind of like don't understand. It's like, wait a minute, Lord, where are you going with this? What do you, you want me to do what with my son? You know, again, sometimes those things are very difficult. Then, and again, for a person of faith, a person that is ruled by faith and not fear, that's always going to lead where? It's always going to be a revelation of Christ in the very end. But we have to follow. We have to be willing, no matter how difficult or depressing or uh, questionable it might, might seem, as we must have absolute faith that God is going to lead us always in the very end to the countenance of his Son who smiles lovingly upon us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. And now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed be God, the giver of salvation, who decreed that mankind should become a new creation in himself when all would be made new. With great confidence, let us now ask him as we say together, Lord, renew us in your spirit. Lord, Lord renew, renew us in, in your spirit. spirit. Lord Jesus, you promised a new heaven and a new earth. Re renew us daily through your Holy Spirit that we may enjoy your presence forever in the heavenly Jerusalem. <clears throat> Lord, Lord, renew, renew us in, in your spirit. spirit and help us to work with you to make this world alive with your Holy <clears throat> Spirit and to build on earth a city of justice, love, and peace. Lord, renew us in your spirit and free us from all negligence and sloth and give us joy in your gifts of grace. Lord, renew us in your spirit and deliver us from all evil and from slavery to the senses which blinds us to your divine goodness. Lord, renew us in your spirit. Loving God, we thank you for hearing all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken. We make them with confidence in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen.
And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept accept the sacrifice sacrifice at your hands for for the the praise and glory of his name, for for our good and the good of all of his holy church. church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities, festivities, of through the yet to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you fa- thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, On the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads always to the glory of the resurrection. And so now with powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim as we sing song to song to Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaroth, Pleni Sun Celi Ateram, Gloria Tuam, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui Domini, Hosanna, in excelsis. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, in the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> and 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jaime Soto, our Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them now into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse most chaste, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. On your day, qui tolles peccata mundi, misere reino peace. On your day, qui tolles peccata mundi, misere reino on you stay, qui tolles peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Ecce on you stay, ecce qui tole peccata mundi. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Domine non sum dinu, quid interest of tectum meum, sed tantum de verbo, et si nabitur anima mea.
And together now, let us stand and pray. <clears throat> As we have received these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, and allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of things of heaven. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless each of you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. <clears throat>